Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, can you hear okay, Doctor? So my name is Harith, and I come from Victoria University of Wellington, specifically from ECRG, Evolutionary Computational Research Group. I've been with this group for, gee, 11 years so far. I'm so proud of it. So today is actually my background is not cybersecurity. Um, my background is evolutionary computation techniques. But for some reason, I've shifted to cybersecurity, and now I'm starting to utilize what I've learned um, from EC um, to solve cybersecurity problems. So today, I'll discuss two pieces of work that we have done recently, and hopefully you'll enjoy. So the first one is related to ransomware detection. Ransomware is just a special type of malware where the idea is the program will hack user files, encrypt them in a way they get locked, and you will not get them back until you actually pay a ransom. So ransomware has been really effective and has um, huge impact on individuals as well as companies. For example, in 2017, there was a huge increase in the number of attacks in terms of ransomware, but because this was targeting individuals, random individuals. Later, that number get decreased. However, the benefits of the attackers they gained from those attacks was hugely increased, mainly because they had shifted from what's known as phishing to whaling, which is instead of targeting individuals, random individuals, to organizations. Now, the problem with that is some of these organizations actually, for example, hospitals. And if the patient's file gets encrypted and the doctor needs to get urgent access to understand this patient, what they are allergic to, they are operating a surgery, for example, and the files get encrypted, that means it's actually a death of life of someone is get lost. So typically there are two ways to handle the, the analysis of ransomware or malware in general. The first one is static analysis, and the idea is relying on hashes, characteristics, libraries that get um, fetched by, by the program, as well as some of the strings that appear here and there in the, in the code of the program. There are some pros and cons with this um, approach, but on the other hand, we have also dynamic analysis. With the dynamic analysis, the main problem that you actually you need to run the program in order to manage or to monitor the behavior of the program. So as I said, there are pros and cons of each of these approaches. And the way that we dealt with is mainly focused on the dynamic analysis, mainly because we can understand the program while it's running or executing on the machine, and we can identify problems, even if the program has changed itself in a way that they, we don't have a signature. But based on the behavior, we can understand that the program is actually doing something suspicious. So we have utilized particle swarm optimization, um, a global searcher, because the search space that we are dealing with was really huge, like um, 32,000 um, features. And the number of samples that we have at hand was really small, like less than 2,000 samples, including goodware as well as ransomware. So we need to learn quite a lot. So based on what PSO gave us, um, it was really actually impressive that it, it was optimizing the number of features that we need to select from different groups of features, so seven groups of features. And after the analysis, we found actually what the domain expert has decided was good, but PSO give us even better solutions compared to human experts. So this is with the um, binary classification as well as the multi-class classification. So it was very promising. On the other hand, we also have um, IoT um, attacks. And the idea here is actually we are dealing with honeypots because IoT devices have been used to launch attacks against other people. Now, we have used honeypots, and the idea of honeypots, we don't try to push the attacker away rather than we grab them and let them get into the system so we can understand their behavior, what they are trying to do, how they're going to access, what targets they are looking for. And based on that, we were able to identify the behavior of different attacks, whether they're automated attacks or human-based attacks. We group them using, again, machine learning, clustering, and other techniques. So it's been very useful, um, helpful to use EC as well as other techniques to help us with AI techniques. 
And if you need more details about both those works or the extension, I'm more than happy to talk to you over the break. Thank you very much.